Hey, Met Kids and friends, it's Mrs. Lorna. I'm off to the beach. Are you headed out for fun summer activities with your friends and family? Can I pray before we go? Dear Lord, thank you for giving us this beautiful summer. These months have been so different and sometimes difficult. But we are so grateful, Lord, that you are faithful to your promises and you will always be there with us every day and through everything. May we learn more about you in this lesson today. Amen. I want to be safe and fun around the water. I have my life jacket, paddle board, my swim fins, and ring, and my goggles. Um, has anyone seen my goggles? Oh, well, hopefully I'll find them soon. We can't control everything. One day... Jesus and his friends had an exciting time on the water. Oh, it started out very pleasant, but soon... Oh, well, I can't tell you all about that now. My other friends are going to tell you the whole story. You stick around, get moving, and find out what happened with Jesus in the Bible. And I'll be right back. Are you with me? Yeah. Everybody, come on. Here we go now. Are you with me? Yeah. Go fish in the house and we're gonna go. Are you with me? Yeah. Everybody, come on. Let's go. Are you with me? Yeah. One, two, three. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. Nice if job. you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. <laughs> if you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. Yeah. If you're happy, come on, wave your hands up in the air. If you're happy, get them up, get them up now. jump around like you don't care. If you're happy, come on, then lift your voices high and tell everyone. If you're happy and you know it, say woohoo! If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, say woohoo! If you're happy, wave your hands up in the air. If you're happy, if you're happy, jump around like you don't care. If you're happy, then lift your voices high and tell everybody why. If you're happy and you know it. If you're happy and you know it, do on, all three. Do if you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know Here it, do go. all three. together, This Little Light of Mine, and C-H-R-I-S-T-I-A-N. Do you know what that spells? You got it. Christian. So, I'd like everybody to stand up, get on your feet, and get your parents to stand with you, because we're all going to be singing together. All right, get your little lights out. We're going to be singing This Little Light of Mine. Show. 
Great job, everyone. Now we're gonna sing a second song. This is C-H-R-I-S-T-I-A-N. So we're gonna see if you can follow along and I'm gonna be speeding it up as we go along. Ready? of the Bible. Jesus calms the storm. This is Jesus, hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like walking on water oh, hey guys. and even raised people from the dead. One day after preaching to a crowd of people, Jesus said to his disciples, let's cross to the other side of the lake. You got it. So they got into a boat and started out. Other boats followed him too. <sighs> and as they sailed across, Jesus fell asleep. Uh -oh. But soon a fierce storm came down on the lake. The boat was filling with water and they were in real danger. The disciples went and woke Jesus up, shouting, Hey, Jesus, wake up! Save us! We are going to drown! Don't you care if we drown? Jesus responded, Why are you afraid? You have so little faith. Then he got up and rebuked the wind and waves, saying, Silence! Be still! Suddenly, the wind stopped, and there was a great calm. Then he asked them, Where is your faith? The disciples were terrified and amazed. Who is this man? They asked each other. When he gives a command, even the wind and waves obey him. Hi, boys and girls. I hope you enjoyed the little video um, that kind of just told us the story about how Jesus one day literally stopped a storm. Can you believe it? I don't know about you, but I've never seen someone do that. And so it uh, kind of just proved that Jesus in the midst of um, that crazy storm that his disciples were experiencing out on the Sea of Galilee, uh, that he was God. 
and and he just wasn't just this, a regular man. And so the thing is, though, is that just like the disciples, we're going to face many storms in our lives, whether they're physical storms like a rainstorm. It's actually raining outside right now. Um, and, you know, we get, get into trouble with those types of things like uh, tornadoes or, you know, natural disasters and things like that. And we're faced in these situations where we don't have control. We don't have a way to save ourselves. Or there's other storms that are a little different, like Maybe they're more um, to do with relationships you have in your life. Like maybe one of your family members dies and that's like another type of storm. Or maybe you have a really you know, stressful test and it's really causing you to be afraid and you don't know how you're going to get through it. Or all sorts of things like that. We're all faced in situations that, it's, that, that are genuinely scary and where we don't have the power or the control to save ourselves. But... Um, the disciples, you know, they, 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 were, they were in this situation where they were probably going to die. So they turned to Jesus and they said, Master, Master, don't you care that we're perishing? And of course, Jesus did care. He cared. He cared super deeply for his disciples. Um, and so he got up. He said, Peace, be still. And the ocean was instantly stopped. The storm stopped in immediately. But then Jesus asked his disciples a very important question. And this is the question that he asks you today. And I need you just take some time to actually think about this question. He says, he said to them, where is your faith? So it's easy to put our faith in all sorts of different things. And what we put our faith in is what we're trusting in to save us, what we're trusting in. Um, and so like, for example, maybe you trust in your house to keep you safe. Uh, at night so that nobody comes in and, and doesn't something or so that you don't, you know, uh, die from cold or, or all sorts of things like that. But the thing is, is that we need to put our faith in the, the one thing for, for, or the one person uh, that nothing is impossible for him and who can actually save you from every storm and every trouble, ultimately, whether or not that leads to death or not. But um, so when Jesus says, where is your faith? Uh, he, he, was, he, he, he wants people to, to put their faith in him because our memory verse for this week actually talks about um, why that is. And that's because the memory verse says, Oh Lord God, it is you who have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and your outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for you. And it's Jesus' death on the cross that, um, that ultimately saves us from our the biggest storm in life, which is death. So if we if we put our faith in Him, He will save us. He cares that we are perishing. He truly cares, and um, nothing is impossible for Him. So the thing is, it's okay to be afraid when we have a storm, when something scary is happening. It's okay to be afraid, but it's where do you put your faith that really matters. So, you know, if for example there is um, two two different types of, of vehicles that could run you over. There's a bike or there's a huge truck. Well, which one does it make more sense to be afraid of? It makes more sense to be of the big truck because the big truck is bigger, way more powerful. Um, it could do a lot more damage to you, right? Than a, little, uh, than a bike. A bike, if a bike hits you, it's still going to probably hurt, but you probably won't die. Whereas a big truck, that could definitely cause death. Well, the thing is, is that we, we're called to be, have like a reverent, holy fear of God. And this type of fear is not a type of fear that's um, a bad type of fear. It's a, it's a fear that keeps you safe, that keeps you um, in God's will. It keeps you out of danger, actually, because the reason why we need to fear God is because God's actually all powerful. Nothing is too hard for him. He can do all things. So if, you know, we're faced with a storm or, or God, who should we actually fear? Should we fear the storm or should we fear the God who is in control of the storm? Well, the answer is we're supposed to fear God because he, he controls all things. It's, he's the one who made the heavens and the earth. So the disciples, when they were in this boat, they feared, they feared the storm. They feared, but they, but they didn't realize that they had God himself in the boat with them. Whereas um, and he could save them from that storm. And he was so much more powerful than the storm. And Jesus showed that. And so I hope that uh, as you go forward this week, you can remember that Jesus is in the storm with you. He's right there with you. And uh, don't fear the storms of your life. Um, 
but turn to Jesus, trust in him, ask him to help you, and you can know that he will be with you through it all. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. And even if that storm leads to death, he will, he will, he, um, has saved you from death if you trust in him and you will spend eternity in heaven with him. So, um, guys, I hope you have a great week and, uh, just remember that Jesus is with you. Hello, boys and girls. Our Bible verse for this week is in Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 17. And it says, Ah, Lord God, it is you who have made the heavens and the earth. By your great power and by your outstretched arm, nothing is too hard for you. Boys and girls, when the storm was happening, the disciples were so afraid and worried, while Jesus was calm and even resting. They couldn't understand that. Why was Jesus not afraid? Well, because he trusts and puts his confidence in God the Father. Boys and girls, as the Bible says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Boys and girls, do not fear, but remember, it is the Lord who forms the mountains and creates the wind. It is the Lord, He alone, who has made heaven, the heavens of heavens, with all their host, the earth and all that is on it, the seas and all that is in them. By His word it is made, and even the wind and the seas obey Him. Have faith in God, nothing is too hard for Him. Boys and girls, without faith, it is impossible to please the Lord. Believe in the Lord, have faith in Him, and let Him do many mighty works in your life. How can you increase in your faith? Well, by asking God to help you. And also, by reading and studying the Bible daily. The Bible says, Faith comes through hearing, and hearing through the Word of God. Trust and believe and put your faith in the Lord God, and do not be afraid. All right, boys and girls, so one last time, our verse for this week is in Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 17. And it says, Ah, Lord God, it is you who have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and by your outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for you. Boys and girls, practice the verse. I know you guys can do it, and God willing, we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Hello, kids. It's Mr. Seth. I hope you're having a great week. I'm back with a new scavenger hunt activity for you. This week's scavenger hunt, everything you will try to find will be outside in God's creation. It's going to be a longer list this week, but try to find as many of these things as you can throughout the week. Parents, if you have the time to take your kids somewhere to do this scavenger hunt, I would recommend the Dominion Arboretum, which is off of Prince of Wales. It's a really nice area. Kids, you know by now, but grab a piece of paper and a pencil so you can write down all these clues that I'm going to give you. It's going to be very impressive if you're able to find all these things. All right. Thing number one, find some wildflowers. Thing number two, find a dead tree. Thing number three, find a pine cone. Find a vine. Find a stream or a creek. Find pine needles. Find an acorn or any other type of nut. Find a hole in a tree. Find a pond. Find an unusually shaped leaf. Find a butterfly or a moth. Find a rock with many different colors. Find a mushroom. Find a beetle. Find a feather. Find a ladybug. Find animal tracks. Find a worm. Find a caterpillar. Find a squirrel. Find a duck. Find an ant. Find a spider web. Find a pine tree. Find seeds or a seed pod. 
Find a smooth or shiny rock. Find insects on a tree. All right, that's the whole list. Now that you have all the clues, you can tell your parents to take a picture of each of the things that you do find. Uh, and if you want to share those pictures with us on our Children's Ministry Facebook page or our Children's, in, in, Children's Ministry Instagram, that would be great to see those pictures. Families, you're welcome to do this all together. Have fun exploring God's beautiful creation and have a wonderful week. Hey, my kids and friends, I found my goggles. I had faith I would. Do we have faith when times get tough, when something happens that we can't control? A bad school grade, someone in our family makes us upset, or maybe it's a storm. Thunder and lightning can be frightening. Our own pets don't like them. It is okay to feel afraid. It is good to talk to your family when you feel sad or afraid. I know someone else you can talk to. He controls the wind, the sun, the rain, and even the stars above. And his name is God. He is there for us whenever we need him. You can talk to him at any time. And that is called prayer. Friends, I hope you talk to Jesus every day. He wants to hear from you. And we want to hear from you and be there for you. You can call us or write to us at metbiblechurch.ca. So please come back next week, listen, move, and learn with me and my friends some exciting lessons about Jesus in the Bible. Have a great week. Bye-bye from Mrs. Lorna.